Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the last section of today. And uh, so the, our next speaker is Pablo Castaneda from uh, Itam, Mexico. He will speak about stability of WAG injection of three-phase flow in virgin reservoirs under general permeabilities. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Grigory. Um, I'm glad to be here. This is the third time that I came back for, uh, to Brazil for uh, an event after I left. And then I want to thank Alexei and Dan for the invitation. It's very nice always to be here. Um, I want to talk about, uh, okay, the title is there, but I'm going to explain a little bit. This is a work that has been, um, there is many people working in, in WAG injection and the first paper that I read, I actually thought that was something really new, uh, known, because uh, everybody talked me about it. And then I take uh, time to understand that was a recent work that most of the people is here. Sido, Dan, um, I don't remember who else was in that paper, was working on. And they uh, shown the solution for the WAG injection uh, in in a reservoir, in a virgin reservoir containing only oil. And after that, we start to work in and try to solve the same problem for um, models a little bit more complex that all have to be with general permeabilities that uh, Professor Hans Browning has the, okay, for me was the luck that he talked about it. And okay, let me tell you about it a little bit. The problem is the problem that maybe all of you know is I'm going to think in a thin reservoir that is uh, all filled with oil and we are going to inject a mixture of gas and water and we want to see what is going to be the solution, the profile of the solution. And the assumptions that we took is that the phases are incompressible, the flow is horizontal, there is no capillarity effects and there is no uh, transfers among phases. And we have a study already uh, three models, that is convex Cody, that was the first uh, complication in the original uh, article, in the first paper. Then we saw the Stone model and Brooks Cody, that is actually not the Brooks Cody that is known, it's an uh, expansion of the model that Hans already made. And we try at the first with typically convex permeability models, there is not truly true because Stone model is not convex all, all the domain and Brooks Cody also has a small uh, concavity at the end close to the oil. And the three parameters are the phase viscosities and okay, first of all I'm going to show you how is the, the solution, what we call the universal solution and going to try to say why this solution must work for every set of permeabilities that um, uh, hold some properties. Okay, this is the problem that uh, we are talking about. We have two conservation laws. We have the saturation of water, the saturation of gas, and we have the saturation of oil, and it's all rescaled, so the saturations add up to one, and we can represent that in this uh, triangle that is the saturation triangle, and any spot in the triangle, if you measure this uh, distance, is going to give you the saturation of each of the three phases. So you have pure gas here, pure, wa pure water here, and pure oil here. And since I have this condition, I can forget the conservation of oil because the conservation of oil came directly from the saturation, the, the saturation of water and the saturation of gas. These uh, functions are the most important, and this is the fractional flow functions, and is determined by the permeabilities, the relative permeabilities, that is the relative permeability divided by the uh, viscosity of that phase is going to give me the mobility of that phase. So the fractional flow function of water is only going to be the mobility of water divided by the, mobili the total mobility, and um, for the gas is the same, is the ratio between the gas mobility between the uh, mobility, the total mobility. And what defines the model is the way you take these, um, uh, these permeabilities. Oops. In the first case, this is the quadratic core model. Each permeability is given by the square of the, uh, the phase. So the water is only, uh, the saturation of water uh, 
squared and the gas is the same and the oil is the same. This is the problem that was solved in 2010 by here are all the authors. And we tried to, they actually, this is nice because in the way that we solve the problems is with the web curve method and it's very difficult sometimes to try to show the solution may be CC, but try to show that the solution that you have is the unique solution is very complex. And this is one of the few cases that I know where the, you can prove that. So they take almost four years and prove it for this problem. And this problem give you, uh, it's, easy, it's not easy, but uh, you can uh, do explicit calculations. But we try to change it a little bit. We talk this, what we call the power law. That is going, we are going to change and we are going to let that A, B, and C be any constant larger than one. So what you have is a each of the perme their relative permeabilities given by a, by a convex curve. The stone model, this is the one given by, um, I don't remember now his name, but this is one of the common uh, stone models. We can change it also and give exponents here in, instead of two and two, we can have A and B, and then you have to he have here B minus one and, and here B minus two, uh, A minus two, one. And this is true of the uh, models that, that we have studied in this work, uh, no, in this work. And we show that the solution behaves in the same way. In the same way, I'm going to explain it in a little bit. Um, and we also have this uh, brooks cotter model. And now we are trying to understand if this kind of solution, the universality that we claim, also stands for more general models. So we take these two kind of models that is given in these two papers that they use the uh, capillary pressure and the wettability in experimental data to try to fit the, the general permeabilities. Uh, okay. Uh, the wave cure method that we use is given, if you remember, I have these equations. Now here, S is saturation of water and gas, and this is the flux of water and gas. So I can written like a system. If I introduce this change of variables, then I get this equation where this J is the Jacobian of the flux. And with the Jacobian, I can just rewrite this like this. So this is the eigenvector and this is the eigenvalue associated to this Jacobian. I have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. And I can try to solve when I have that the uh, speed in the front is larger than the speed of the injection. So I'm going to have the wave curve method. I have here the characteristic speeds in the front and in the backwards, but I need to fill somehow this, this part here. And I'm going to do it with this. And when I solve uh, this uh, integral equation, what I get is what I call the rarefaction curve. We can have also the other problem that is when we have that the speed uh, before, the sh before the interface is f faster than the uh, speed after the interface. So the, the states behind try to go over the states in, in the front, and this is going to give me a, a, an interface that is going to be a discontinuous solution that is called a shock, and I need to calculate this speed. If you see it in the characteristics, what we have is the characteristics of the oil, for example, are, fa are slower than the characteristics of the injected fluids or, or the mixture of the injected fluids, and I need to calculate this um, speed where it's going to change actually from left and right state. Uh, this is given by the ranking of conditions. That is a mass balance. So if I write it in the, in the expanded form, I have the, the balance of the water of the flux of the water, and this is the saturation, and this is going to be my, my speed. This is the, correct, the speed of the shock wave. And I need to find a, a sigma that uh, match these two equations. Uh, if I try to cancel the sigmas, I can rewrite these two equations like this. So in the space of space or in the triangle of saturations, what I have is that I can uh, find a set of curves that is going to give me the positions for a left state. If I fixed one of the states, this uh, SO, I can find 
the states where there is a sigma that is going to um, hold this relation. And this is states, if I plot all the states, I'm going to, ha to call this the Huguenot locus. The Huguenot locus is not a curve because in the very beginning, uh, I have two curves that intersect because this is given by the two characteristic speeds of the Jacobian of the flux. And I can catalogate that or order, uh, I can give the, uh, an order, I can take the, the small one like RS and the fastest like um, RF. And this is going to give me a classification of the kind of shocks that I can have. And the classification was given by um, LAX, for example. The idea is that I can have a shock where the characteristic speeds that in pine in the in the shock are the slow characteristics, and I'm going to have it, to call it a lax one shock or a slow shock, and the other characteristic is only to ch is going to change from one side to the other side of the shock. If the shocks that are uh, converging in the in the shock speed are the fast characteristics, then I'm going to call it a, a two lax or a fast shock. There are another kind of shocks that are uh, under compressive, over compressive, uh, transition shocks. But this is the two kind of shocks that I'm going to use. The other one that I'm going to use is, okay, over compressive is when all the characteristics, slow as fast, um, get inside the, the shock. Okay. Then if I take a left state in the saturation uh, space, the saturation triangle, and a right state in the saturation space, then I want to connect these two saturations but a certain uh, group of waves. And the groups of waves can be made by shock waves or rarefaction curves. This is an example. Uh, what we do always is try to uh, construct the slow wave in the increasing uh, speeds. And from the left state and from the right state, we construct the, the wave curve, the fast wave curve in the backward direction that that means that this is the direction where they are decreasing the, the characteristic speeds. And if these two states are close, near enough, we, can, we always find a place where they intersect. And this is going to be the intermediate state. And I'm going to have a, small, uh, a slow wave group until this one. Then I'm going to have a fast uh, group onto, to the right state. And OK. This is in my face space, but what does it mean in the profile? If I think that this is uh, my x, this is the horizontal leg axis of the reservoir, um, have, for example, a certain saturation of, of oil, and I'm injecting a mixture of water and gas that is going to give me this saturation of oil. So the rarefaction is going to be something that is continuous. Then I'm going to have this middle state that has it uh, own speed, and then I'm going to have this shock sp speed, and I'm going to see some profile of this, uh, in more or less like this. OK, and this is for a fixed time. So what I can think is that the speeds, actually, I have, um, I'm constructing the wave group. So in time, what I see is that this drawing is increasing on time. So I can say what is going to happen, and I can see, for example, if this is the injection point, and I have an extraction point here. I can calculate how, much, how, how long it's going to take this shock to uh, reach the other side. And when this happens, OK, I know that the solution is going to change, but at least I can uh, then understand how many oil that we extract in all this process. And this is very important at the beginning, because this is going to give us what is the best mixture for the extraction of oil? OK, trying to draw a little bit. This is the, character, the rarefaction curve, the integral curves of uh, the, the rarefaction model. This is when I take the slowest uh, characteristic speed. This is when I have the fast characteristic speed. Here I put some arrows pointing out where the uh, speeds are increasing. So what I see is that the speeds increase uh, trying to get far away from the boundaries. If I remember, I'm going to remember you that I'm trying to solve the problem when I said that the oil is the only 
um, fluid in the reservoir and I'm going to inject a mixture of gas and water that is going to reflect my WAG injection. So I want to see how it's going to be the construction of the wave cures in this, in this kind of triangles. Then my left state is going to be somewhere in this side and my right state is going to be here just at the vertex. And this is the slow uh, rarefaction curves. I have here the fast rarefaction curves. I didn't put it the, the arrows because here in the center they change um, many times of directions. So what is important here is to know that the direction is increasing uh, along from the vertex. Um, a long time ago we find this point looks um, very peculiar. If you see there is a foliation and you can follow these curves and it's very nice, but we, here we have a singularity. And I think that every everybody that starts to study these kind of models with, um, with uh, general permeabilities or relative permeabilities, you find this point and this point looks uh, impressive because you don't know what's happening there. And actually, everybody knows a lot of time ago that when this relation uh, holds, then you find this point. This is just the saturation of water and gas for this point when the uh, derivative of the, each of the mobilities is the same. This is nice, but we also find a lo um, few years ago that this is just the minimum of the total mobility when you work with uh, Cori mo models doesn't care if you are using the convex Cauchy model, the power law Cauchy model, or the quadratic Cauchy model. And this is nice because this is the point where all the fluids start to uh, try to, um, I don't know what is the word. Um, here's where the mobility is the minimum. So uh, the gas, the water, and the oil have more problems to trying to move all around. And what is very in, uh, interesting is that all the solutions try to get far away from this point. And okay, this is just a curiosity for the people that do this kind of applications. And okay, what is what we claim the universal solution? The universal solution, uh, what we claim is that every time that you inject a mixture of water and gas, you are going to have, of course, at the beginning, some wave that is going to have the three saturations all the time. But after a while, you are going to have only two saturations in the front. The, the front wave is going to have only two saturations. It's going to be oil and water or oil and gas. And this is what is going to give us the universality in the sense that every time that you solve a WAG injection, you have a water breakthrough or gas breakthrough. And here, this is the model for the convex current model. Um, what we see is that we have a, a, a special curve here inside. This curve is given by the Huguenot locus of the O vertex, because if you remember, I want to construct the, the wave curve uh, to try to reach this point. But if we see the rarefactions go in the opposite way, direction, the uh, slow rarefactions and the fast rarefaction. So the only way that we can reach this point is by a shock. Then we try to find it by a shock and we calculate the Huguenot locus of the O vertex and we see that it's going to be given by the side GO, the side WO, and we have a, in, another cube inside that we have it, we call it the uh, internal Huguenot. And from any point of this, we can reach the oil state. So this is going to give uh, the last wave in my fast wave group. So uh, if we try to understand what's happening here, we see that all the points from B star to O are direct shocks that is going to work like a solution. But to, if you try to compose a shock from here to here, we are going to see that the admissibility of the shock is not okay. So we are going to need to reach this point with a rarefaction, for example. And if we take all the rarefactions that can reach this point, they are going to be as, uh, slow rarefactions that came uh, from B. So this is going to be a very particular solution that we call it a separatrix solution. And it's going to be a rarefaction from B to B star, and from B star to O is going to be a shock. And this is more or less the solution of the bucklet level solution. And if we do in the sides, we can see that it's more or less the same. 
we have a point that is W star, for example. From every point from O to W star, there is a shock from that point to O, but if you go beneath that, you don't have shocks. So you need to compose with a rarefaction, and then you have shocks from here to here. This is, again, pocket leveret, and the same in the other side. So we have three solutions. Uh, they are composed in the sides only by fast uh, wave groups, and in the middle, there is a mixture because here is a, what I call it an uh, super over, uh, over compressive shock and a small rarefaction, uh, slow rarefaction. But what happened with the points that we are going, we are interesting in all the other uh, parts of the site? The idea then is try to reach all the separatrix or one of the sites. But what we see is that the rarefactions, small rarefactions, now I only can use uh, slow waves. Uh, pointing in the opposite direction, so I cannot reach it by rarefactions, we do the same. We try to construct the Huguenot locus for any point here, and we see that we can uh, go all until this point. And this point is going to be uh, this curve here. We call it uh, the boundary extension of this side. Actually, the boundary extension is given by all this curve for the side GO and for the side O, W is all this cube. That means that any shock inside uh, this region is uh, admissible to the boundary. And we can do the same. We can go with a rarefaction, small rarefaction, until this point, and then we go to the shock, and the, with a shock to a point in this side, and this is going to construct the, the slow wave group, and then we have the fast wave group with an intermediate state here. And this gives us the solution that we call universally. Um, then we have, if we have any state from B to W, you are going to have uh, this small, slow rarefaction with a slow, sh like one, lock sh one lax shock until the intermediate state here. And it depends if you are beneath this, this state or above that. That is, the second wave group is going to be a rarefaction with a shock or only a shock. And what happened here in the, in the middle? In the middle, we have this uh, B star um, state. But this B star state has two other states in the boundaries that we call it B star G and B star W. And there is shock from this point to this point, a shock from this point to this point. And these two points are always above W star and G star. And what we can see is that the speed of the shock from B star to B star W is the same that the speed from B star W to O. And there is a theorem, or you can calculate also, that is going to be the same speed that B star O. So any composition of these shocks is going to give you the same profile, because in the uh, profile picture, maybe you can see like a ghost shock. This, is, this intermediate state is not going to appear. And this is nice because that means that even if we change the concentration of the injection, maybe we, ca we change from water uh, breakthrough to gas wave breakthrough, but it's going to be in a certain way, uh, it's continuous, the change. OK, this is what we have. And uh, here are, is an example. Uh, for example, for this uh, state J, we have a, small, a slow rarefaction until this M star. Then we have a one lakh shock to M. Uh, here we have a small, uh, rare, fast rarefaction, and then a lax to shock. And we can more or less put it in this way. The slow wave is going to be always the same. A rarefaction uh, followed by a shock. And the fast wave can be a rarefaction uh, followed by a, lax, by a shock or simply a shock. And in the profile, it's going to be something like this. I have given this mixture. This is the quantity of water that I have, the quantity of gas that I have. Then I can see that the rarefaction is going to have three fluids. This is the quantity of gas, this is the quantity of water, and this is the quantity of oil. Until this middle state M, where I'm going to have this shock, I'm going to reach this uh, intermediate state M, that is going to be all this uh, flat uh, place where I only have a mixture of gas and oil, and then a small rarefaction and a shock that is going to give me the, the oil. So what I can see is that uh, if I do this injection 
my breakthrough is going to be by gas because the water is going to uh, rest be, uh, behind. And this is what we call the universality. And the idea is how we can say when this universality holds. So this is more or less the ideas that we have. That we have. And this is the new, uh, the umbilic point. And OK, this is, seems important. Uh, in order to have this water breakthrough or gas breakthrough, you need that the streak hyperboli hyperbolicity breaks down somewhere. Maybe in this point, the umbilic point, uh, I forgot to say it. In, in the stone model, you have something uh, related to that, that is the elliptic region. And this is going to give us this idea that they have uh, slow rarefactions that go in, an, in one way and a slow rarefactions that go in another way. So this is going to give me this uh, splitting of solutions. OK, the vertex O needs to be umbilic. This is the proposition that we need in order to reach that. We need that it's going to be shocks and not rarefactions. So uh, the fast speed need uh, uh, increase away from the vertices, in, and we can guarantee this. We can also say, we said also that we need to start with a rarefaction here. So we need that the slow speed increases away from the boundaries, or at least from this boundary. Um, uh, there is something that we call the banana diagram that tells us when the separatric solution from B star to the other B stars is going to be in the correct order. What we need is that the fractional flow of the oil be larger in the separatrix than in the sides. And if you have this, we can uh, show that then we need to jump from to one side or to the other side. And this seems enough to uh, try to ask uh, that the models have um, superlinear decay in the residual saturations. Actually, the pictures of Professor Browning uh, show that not always is in this way, it can be linear. But this is an assumption that is important in order to hold it in this way. But we only need that the slow speed increases away from boundary. So we can construct models where we can have uh, mild assumptions, but we have this kind of uh, solution. And what I say is that we were working with two models given by Sorby, Holm, and Van Dyke. And this is the way that we're trying to um, fit the data that they have. This is one idea. It's uh, more or less the idea that they used to uh, construct a stone model. They give us the relative permeability of the oil in the water side like this, or the oil in the gas side like this. And we see that the permeabilities inside are something like that. So we can uh, choose it like this. This is an interpolation from this uh, permeability to this permeability. And this is the uh, isoperms of the oil saturation. We can do something like that for water also. It depends on each model, because in one of the papers, uh, they have uh, five different um, set of permeabilities for water, gas, and oil. Uh, so the other way to do it is to use a vanish point far away and try to do the isoperms in this way. And with this, we can work with the models that they have yeah, and try to, to show if the solution uh, remains um, in the same way. This is what we have. There is not very clear here. Uh, the green uh, curves are the isoperms of the gas. Here there are blue curves that are the isoperms of the water, and are red curves that are the, are the isoperms of the oil. And what we see is that the models, uh, this idea that convex permeability are really fine, here are not very nice because they have a lot of curves, and that maybe give us some problems. But when we try to construct all the solution, what we see is, for example, what they call the fractional width in Van Dyke give us these curves. This curve is the uh, extension boundary from the side GO, and this is the uh, extension boundary for, for the side WO. Here we have the internal ergonomic from O to this point, and then I break it down and I put all, only the, the rarefaction. So this is my separatrix from J. I have reached this point, then I have this shock. 
But here, we also have these two shocks that satisfy that triple rule. Uh, that is, that the speed shock from here to here and from here to here is the same like the speed shock from here to here. And so uh, the solution remains the same. We have also, uh, in these sides, uh, the behavior is like buckled leveret. So we have also this uh, wedge point uh, where we have only uh, shocks or rather fractures with shocks, and that one is going to split my domain with J1 and J2, where I'm going to have in the second weight rather fraction or only a sh uh, two lakh shock. This is another of the models of the, uh, this is the mixed wet. This is in home in 2010, and we have the same structure. So we can see that this universality holds in these models also. And OK, uh, actually, it's time. Then it's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>